Hi everybody, Tisa here, the Acrylic Diva. It's Wednesday about straight up noon here in San Francisco. And uh, today's topic is going to be all about matte and gloss gel and how to use them to your advantage. And we're going to throw a little acrylic encaustic in there as well. So let's jump right into the overhead camera and get that set up so you can see what I'm talking about. What I'm going to talk about today is the difference between matte and gloss. Matte here, gloss here. This is a gloss medium. You can almost not see that in the camera. I'm going to flick it around there. So that is gloss medium and this is matte medium. And you'll see there's a really big difference in the clarity of these two as well. Um, okay, so let me just get over here and make sure everything's working properly in the camera. Looks like it. Okay, good. All right, um, let me come back and talk to the camera here for a second because one of the things that I get a question about frequently is how to get that kind of waxy encaustic look with acrylics and not have to use, you know, uh, melted wax and stuff like that. So I'm going to cover a little introduction um, to that today. Just do a little bit of acrylic encaustic and show you how you can get some very cool waxy kind of looks uh, without using hot wax and uh, melting wax and a heat gun, a torch and, and stuff like that. Okay, so before I do that I want to just uh, sh give a shout out to the Creative Flow folks that are joining me on Thursday night. Yay! Um, every Thursday night on my other YouTube channel we have Creative Flow. This week we are going to be wrapping up our Italian landscape. I'll show you a little quick, if I can get my hands to work, there's a little quick view of our Italian landscape that we're working on. That's the underpainting and we're going to be wrapping that up this week and then next week we're going to be starting some cool stuff as well. So if you get a chance join us on Thursday nights on the other YouTube channel. I will put that in the chat box later on and I'll also put it in the show notes for this show and when it goes uh, when it goes archived up to the YouTube channel you can always click on that link and then jump over there. First two weeks are free. It's pretty cool. It's only $6.99 a month. I mean that's like that's like a vente latte, right? <laughs> okay, so join me on Thursday nights for that. Um, next up coming up probably in August or September uh, will be the new plein air class that's going to be launching on my teaching channel um, on my teaching site and I'll be sure that there's a link to that in the show notes as well. Okay so let's get into some really cool interesting uh, acrylic encaustic stuff. Let me jump over here to the overhead camera kind of quickly. What you're looking at right here are some different uh, gels and mediums and I've got them on a board that's labeled transparency and opacity um, and the really uh, important thing to remember here is that a lot of these gels and mediums um, are opaque. So for instance if you take a look here at light molding paste you can see that you can't see much of that sharpie pin that's underneath it. The same goes for crackle paste. Coarse molding paste um, is a little more translucent and then of course soft gel matte is pretty translucent. So what I'm going to try to show you, which might be kind of hard to see in the camera, I want to put the heavy gel gloss and the soft gel matte right next to each other kind of like that. Let me see if I got it there. So because I only have two hands, I really, I need three hands to do this. Let's go like that. Okay, that's kind of better. All right, so if I flick it around with the camera, you might be able to see the waxy quality and then the glossy quality. So here's the heavy gel gloss and I'm going to try and get that to, to kind of glare a little bit. See that glare? 
Now see how the soft gel matte is not glaring? That's that very waxy surface. We're going to talk a little bit more about that, but if you want to do acrylic encaustic, this is the kind of thing you want to use. You want to use a, a gel or a medium that has matte in the name. Okay, It'll make a big difference. So take a look at these two. This is going to be even more apparent. So this is, I'll flick it to the side like that. See that glossy quality here? This is soft gel gloss. Okay, and this is heavy gel matte, this one here. Now, I just got through showing you this board, just to confuse you further. This is soft gel matte, and this is heavy gel gloss. Now, the interesting thing here is there's a couple of characteristics with these gels that you want to pay attention to. So we're not only going to talk about whether they're gloss or matte, but also about whether they're heavy or soft. So the difference here, gloss and matte, we're talking about the surface sheen, whether they are shiny or waxy. Okay, you can see that pretty clearly there between the soft gel matte and the heavy gel gloss. And then the, the soft and the heavy aspect of these has to do with the weight of the gel. So if you want something that's a little lighter, you're going to get soft gel matte, and that is going to be more like yogurt. And then heavy gel, either gloss or matte, is going to be thicker, more like peanut butter. Okay? So I hope you guys get that. Heavy versus soft gloss versus matte. Okay? All right. Um, there will be a test, so pay attention. <laughs> All right. So here is a really good example of the two. The soft gel gloss here mixed with fluid acrylics. You can see how glossy that is. I'm going to flick it around so you can get a real feel for that super glossy aspect. And it also, whenever you use anything that says gloss, the clarity of your color is going to stay, it's going to stay clear. It's not going to be waxy or foggy. It, on the other hand, if you want that waxy, more encaustic look, then you're going to want something that says matte. And see the difference between the blues here? These are the same colors. I've used the same colors on both of these. But look at the clarity of the blue here versus the cloudiness of the blue here. Okay? Now, when I'm painting, I want the clarity of color, but if you're doing something that's kind of encaustic-like, then you're going to want this kind of effect, okay? Just bear that in mind. And the one thing that I see a lot of, too, is I see people using matte medium. Let me get my matte medium board back out here again. I see people using a lot of matte medium for things like uh, collage and mixed media types of things. Now, bear in mind, if you're doing uh, this, if you're using matte medium for stuff like collage and mixed media, you are going to be graying down your color. And you may or may not want that. So pay attention to that, okay? If you want clarity of color, make sure that you've got something that's gloss medium, okay? See that shiny gloss? Okay, let me just uh, jump into the chat. Hey, Coho Salmon, good morning. How are you? Good morning. Is it morning where you are? It's afternoon where I am. So, <laughs> where are you, by the way? Um, glad, glad you could join me. I am talking about um, encaustic types of stuff today. So, uh, let me give you a kind of an example. Here's a board. I'm going to show that to the camera up close. So, here is a board with a couple of different types of mixtures. And I want you to take a look. I'm going to get the board, get it right there so you can see the um, the names here. Let's make sure that's in focus. It should be. I'll try not to move too much. There. Uh, take a look at the text as well. See how the text is sort of diffused behind the soft gel mat. And this is acrylic ground for pastels with a little Quinn Nickel Azo Gold in it. So that'll give you a really good idea about how to create this kind of waxy surface. So 
let's do a little mixing here. I'm going to get my pen here and I'm thinking, I'm hoping this is my water, water, um, let's just, let's just double check and make sure that this is in fact my, well it might bleed a little bit, but that's all right. I believe this is archival pigmented ink. My Sharpie pen has gone on vacation. Let's see, did my Sharpie pen, oh no, there's my Sharpie pen. My Sharpie pen did not go on vacation. All right, let's do this correctly now. Sharpie pen. I like to use the Sharpie pen when I'm demoing this because I know that it's not going to bleed and so I can do stuff with it. Now, I'm gonna take my soft gel mat and you can see, in, oops, this was a brand new one. Look at that. I'm going to have to open that up. Fingers, don't fail me now. It is cold in San Francisco, you all. I'm freezing. I've been cold all day. I'm sitting here all bundled up. Um, <laughs> so my fingers are like little claws. The soft gel mat, when you look at it in the jar, looks kind of a little bit more gray than the heavy gel gloss. Where's my heavy gel gloss? Let me show you those two side by side. See the difference there? The soft gel, the heavy gel gloss, heavy gel gloss, very white. Soft gel matte, kinda gray. A Little bit on the gray side, okay? What that tells you is that the heavy gel gloss, whenever it's really white like this, whether it's heavy gel, regular gel, soft gel, whatever it is, when it's really white like this, it's going to dry really, really clear. If it's on the gray side like this, it's going to dry cloudy. Okay? So bear that in mind. Um, just check in. Oh, Sierra Foothills, and it's afternoon. All right. <laughs> You're in the Sierra Foothills. We're in the same time zone, Coho. So yeah, and I don't know if it's cold up there or not, but it's freezing down here by the water. So here in San Fran. Um, alrighty, so let's take a look at the soft gel mat. I'm going to put some of that out. Now to get this kind of cool encaustic look, beeswax look, we want to put a drop, just a drop. See this right here? Let's see. Let's go to... I think it's this one. That This has a tiny bit of interference violet in it. That's really pretty, isn't it? Um, this has nothing in it. And this, I believe this has a drop of Indian yellow. So if you want it to look kind of beeswaxy, we're going to put a drop of Indian yellow into that. Just a tiny drop. And I'm going to put it over to the side because even a drop like that is, is kind of too much because we want it to look like beeswax. We don't want it to look like yellow paint. So here's a tiny, I'm going to just tip the, the tip of my um, palette knife in that and mix it here. And that's Indian yellow hue. And it, you know, these pigments are super strong. So, you know, err on the side of caution when you're doing this. Because if I had put that entire blob of Indian yellow into this, it wouldn't it wouldn't look right at all. Okay, so here we go. Take a look at that. Now, I'm gonna put this down over my Sharpie pen. And um, you know, when you're doing stuff like this in the studio, it's a really good idea to make these sample boards. I make I must have I don't know five or six hundred of these boards. I'm, I make boards all the time. Whenever I'm waiting for paint to dry, I just make boards. You know, because if you leave me to my own devices, I get in trouble. So, <laughs> all right. So there is my soft gel mat, and with just a tiny touch of that Indian yellow in it. Now, when it dries, it's going to have that very waxy look like this. Okay, maybe just a hint more yellow than this. So there you go. That is a little bit about the um, the way that you can create 
the very uh, waxy and caustic look. The other cool thing about this, let me just go ahead and use up all of this. Let's just put it all out there. The other really cool thing about this is that it'll give you enough texture so that you can do a little scraffito if you want. Right? And if you have underpainted your background and then you do scraffito on top of it, scraffito, um, you will get some really cool results. When this dries, it's going to look really awesome. So look at the difference between, hang on a second. I want you to see the difference between the heavy gel gloss. I'm going to clean my knife really well. And the soft gel matte. So let me get this off my plate. I don't want to muddy up my heavy gel gloss with any of the soft gel matte. So I will just wipe that like so. And I've got heavy gel gloss here. And I'm going to go over to my Indian Yellow, take a drop of that, a little bit there, like so. Mix it up. And you can see right away the difference in these two mixtures. It's pretty obvious. And don't, don't forget now, whenever you have anything that says gloss, it's going to dry clear. So this doesn't look too impressive right now, does it? It's just like, oh, well, it's a little yellow. But the thing that's cool about it is when it dries, you just have a hint of yellow in this gel. And it can be very, very beautiful. You can do some pretty cool stuff with it. So there's our heavy gel gloss. And I'll just do my scraffito right there. Now when those dry, um, I'll come back. I'll take a picture of those and post it when those dry. And just because I've got one uh, thing left here, I'm going to do the same thing with glass beads, which has nothing to do with matte or gel or matte or gloss. It's just that I have a little a little bit of board left, so I thought I'd do a little something something there. So I've got my glass beads. Now these are in uh, a polymer base, so that polymer will dry clear and you have nothing but glass beads left, which is pretty cool. These are, these are really pretty. So I'm going to take some glass beads, put them down over here, take a drop of the Indian yellow, a little bit more, mix it up give myself a little room here, mix it up, and the color is going to be so subtle, you'll be like, wow, why'd she even bother? But it will make a difference. So we'll put those guys down, spread them out, and a little scraffito. There we go. Okay, so there's my sample board, soft gel mat, and always be sure that you um, label, label stuff. So obviously label it before you put the gel down, right? <laughs> Not after, like I'm doing. Glass beads, heavy gel gloss, soft gel mat. Tiny tiny little mat there. Okay. That way you always know what you're working with and these sample boards will really help you in the long run. Keep a handle on everything and all the surfaces and whatnot. And remember now, when you go to buy these gels and mediums, remember that you've got the little, um, if you're buying golden stuff, and of course you know, that's what I know best, so that's what I'm always going to be talking about. You guys can buy anything you want, but this is what I use, so. Um, 
take a look on the back of the golden jars and you will have this little slider bar and it will tell you whether that particular product is transparent or opaque, matte or gloss, thick or thin. And that will really help you narrow down what it is you want to, to do. Okay, and if you know what it is you're trying to do, then of course you can get the right product for that. Okay, it helps to have a little bit of intention when you're working.